Hey, it's Alec from Sharing the Journey. Look what just pulled back in the campground. Jack and Jody are back with their 2019 host and they brought their daughter along with them. Now it is raining and windy as heck out here. We're gonna go over to the clubhouse and talk to their daughter and get a family's perspective on us crazy old people that go full timing in our RVs. Hey y'all, like I said earlier, this is Alec with Sharing the Journey. I'm here with Kristen. Yes. And this is Jack and Jody's youngest daughter, youngest of three. And uh, if y'all remember a couple of weeks ago, and I'll link the video down in the description, we interviewed them and took a tour of their 2019 host truck camper. If I remember correctly, it's a 16.1 and uh, it's uh, smaller than my motor home. <laughs> so we're gonna talk with Kristen and just get a family's perspective, especially, I didn't realize when they told me she was gonna be here that we would have the princess of the family. <laughs> Anybody that has children knows the baby is the princess and is treated more special than the other children and we'll see how she handled it. I wish I could deny that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have not asked Kristen anything about how she feels about her parents um, leaving or running away from home like so many of us old people have done. But before we get to there, I'm going to get her to tell us a little bit about herself. And I'm going to start off, so my wife is not here, so she cannot be my moral compass. And I'm going to ask the one question I've always been told to never ask a woman. How old are you? I am 32. 32 years old, and what do you do for a living? I work with robotic welding. Robotic weld, wow, that sounds pretty fancy. <laughs> so, what were you doing when your parents left home? I was working as a financial reporting accountant for an oil and gas company. All right, so you're a pretty smart girl. Lady, <laughs> lady, pretty smart lady. What did you think about your parents' decision so if I remember correctly from the interview, many years ago they sold the house, they moved into an apartment, then yeah. they moved into a smaller apartment, then they moved into a smaller apartment, and the next thing you know, they're homeless, <laughs> living in the back of a truck. Yeah. So what did you think of that? Um, I didn't think it would last very long. Um, we had never been camping or outdoorsy or anything like that for my entire childhood or my entire life up until that point. So when they were like, we're going to get in a camper, we're going to live in that. And I was like, okay. Sure you are. Sure. <laughs> I give it a week. <laughs> <laughs> How about their choice? Like I told them, I said, he's got a huge truck. He could pull one of these massive fifth wheels on the road without any problem. What did you think about the decision or did you help with the decision process at all with picking the smallest of small? I did not have any say. I don't think any of us kids had any say in what they chose to do. Um, we went to a couple RV shows and you walk through and you're like, wow, look at these. They're amazing. They're basically a house. Um, they are a house. <laughs> yeah, they are. And uh, my parents were like, no, we just don't want anything that big. We don't want to maneuver it. We don't want to, you know, because again, not only had we never been camping, we had never owned trucks. We had never towed boats or toys or you know, so for them, this was a 180 on their lifestyle to go from driving like Chevy Cavaliers to an F-150, an F-350. Well, I'm going to make some of my viewers angry. I'm glad to see they're not driving a Chevy anymore and they went with a really good truck and they're driving a Ford now. Um, so do you, do you think this is something that you could do? This one day is something I would definitely love to do right. um, especially with like I have a dog and so to be able to take him somewhere different every couple of weeks every every month would be amazing um, so yeah I would love to do it well we actually full-time with two dogs and a cat that we rescued three years ago that was dumped oh, wow. at a campground so we have a big dog like your dog yeah and then we have a little well she used to be a pocket puppy but she eats too much she's weighs too much to be a pocket puppy now but <laughs> she's a little dachshund mix and uh so you think you could what are your brothers and sisters 
or is it brothers or just sisters? Uh, one brother and one sister. And what do they think? Um, so my sister, she is, she just loves that they're happy. She right. loves that they're out enjoying life. And I think we all get a little bit worried. Right. Like, you know, sometimes when they go to a place where there's no cell phone service or something like that, and you're like, uh, um, but then you see pictures of their travels, you hear them talk about their life and to see them just light up, Yes. you know, we, they're definitely happy people. Yeah. So we just, you know, I've talked to my siblings and we just love that they're happy. And they're living life to the fullest instead of sitting in the same house or in the retirement home. Right. You know? Well, and they're pretty close in age to needing a retirement home, huh? <laughs> <laughs> they better be nice. I get to pick the retirement home. <laughs> oh, wow. So in our family, we use uh, an app called Life360. We have six kids. Oh, wow. And um, they worry about, not so much about me, but about their mother. <laughs> and so we have a family Life360 group. Some of the kids have joined it, some have not. Some don't want me to know what they're up to, <laughs> even though they're older. But um, do y'all do anything um, to kind of, in case you don't hear from them for two weeks, you can check the app and say, oh, they were in New Mexico. <laughs> not long ago in Navajo, Mexico. We better call the police and get them to go by this location to check on them. Uh, so we do the share your location with an right. iPhone, <laughs> which has been fun. It's fun watching them like move around the country and like, oh, where are they today? <laughs> so but I, basically uh, you're an internet stalker. It's not me, it's my dad. Cause I had, in order to get that, I had to share my location. Right. So I travel for work and I was just at a hotel that was linked uh, right across from a medical center. Oh, he felt like <laughs> calling you. Are you okay? Are so you in the hospital? He called up, he's trying to be real calm. He's trying to like the, hey, what, um, what are you, where are you right now? <laughs> yeah. I'm in room 212. I just had my appendix removed, Dad. I didn't want to bother you because you're having so much fun on the road. So there's times where if even if I'm driving to meet them and I go a direction he didn't think or like a different route than he thought I should go, right. I'll get a phone call. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, it's like you should have taken a left at the McDonald's. It's <laughs> exactly what it's like. So... Um, what part you live in texas now yep I, so you're a couple hours away yeah about three hours north of here okay so so parents were here and you decided hey I don't, they don't have much room because they're in a 16 <laughs> foot trailer or camper so i'm gonna go join them and switch between them in the middle in the bed how's that going yeah they didn't have a lot of room so i brought down my big dog and just to make it tighter <laughs> just to make it just to make sure there's a tripping hazard right <laughs> Um, the bed folds out right by the, or the little bench folds into a bed. So where your dad sits right by the, <clears throat> right by the door? Uh, behind the table. Ah, uh, where your mom sits and, yeah. and watches my people. Mom, what does she call that? Box. The cat box? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I went, when we went over there, I said, can we just use that big table and the cat box? And Jody said, no, my daughter brought way too much stuff. She doesn't realize what tiny living is. We're going to have to go to the clubhouse it's because true. there's stuff everywhere. Yep. <laughs> so if you saw her, just look over. Mom didn't want us to do the interview. There's mom over there without her being um, able to hear what's said about her. She'll want to wait till this comes out in two weeks. So she goes, I'm not sure I trust. I got to approve what she says. So I'm not sure we're getting the true story. So switching gears a little bit, um, so my understanding is that your parents decided to give you the task of safeguarding some of the family's heirlooms and secrets. Yep. down in your basement before they hit the road yep they gave us all the leftover stuff from their house and their downsizing and all their well that doesn't sound nearly as good as heirlooms and treasures <laughs> leftovers but i understand something special happened to that stuff yes um i decided to move from colorado to houston and i trashed it all oh wow so if you're going to entrust your family heirlooms to your children, uh, you ought to put a clause on there that uh, says, don't trash my stuff. It becomes too inconvenient. Yeah. Pick, pick a child that's not so flighty. Right. 
So, um, do you have any input in their future travels or what their extended plans are? Um, so each December they swing by Texas to see me. Okay. Um, and then we try to just link up throughout the year. So I travel a lot for work, so I just let them know where I'm going to be. So there's a couple times that I've been in like Georgia and I just drive a couple hours to go have dinner with them and then drive back to work or wherever they're at in the country. That's so pretty cool. it's been cool. a really fun experience for all of us to be like, where are you at this week? Oh my God, I'm two hours away. <laughs> right. So how about the siblings, your brother and sister? Yeah. They do the same thing or is it like me? I have to drive 2,000 miles to be convenient for my children. Yeah. Uh, well, they have kids, spouses, more stable lives. <laughs> so you're saying you're not stable? I am not. <laughs> I could be anywhere at any moment's notice. <laughs> so they're, you know, so yeah, they try to travel out towards them. Right. To be a little bit closer to make the drive a little bit easier for everybody. So I know it was a tough adjustment for some of my children. Like I said, with six children, we have personalities that go all across the rainbow. Um, what advice would you have for family members or children of us crazy old people that decide to just throw caution to the wind, sell or give away everything we've worked for and hit the road? It's been tough for some of my kids to yeah. comprehend. And uh, so what advice do you have for families that are dealing with crazy parents? I would say just embrace the change. Embrace it. It means that there's still a lot of life left in your parents, a lot of, you know, happiness. And so to just embrace that they have that much life to still go out and explore stuff, to still want to go out and do a lot of things. Um, and take it as like, you know, a sign that you're never too old to keep chasing your dreams. Right. You know, and so just embrace it. Okay. Well, we want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your time and giving us a family's perspective. Yeah. And uh, this has been pretty cool. I'm glad you're getting to see your folks and hopefully we'll hit them down the road. Uh, Jody, y'all going to make it to Montana to come see us in Yellowstone this, this summer. No, we're already heading to Minnesota. Minnesota. I was there last winter. That's, you can keep Minnesota. Okay. Too cold for me. All right, well, y'all uh, have a good, safe day, and uh, be careful out there on the roads. We'll see you later from Sharing the Journey.